Hi, I'm James Cook of Baxley Industries, and welcome to our daily Czech Republic news for expatriates. For those of us who are relying upon public transportation, state-owned Czech railways will be reducing costs as they are facing increasing competition from private competitors such as Regiojet. The Transportation Ministry made the announcement today after Finance Minister Miroslav Kolosevic announced a budget that was short $600 million in financing, and he felt appropriate adjustments had to be made. The Transportation Ministry also announced a proposed sale of numerous assets to help earn more revenue to apply for the budget of 2012. Also in business news, the Czech National Bank announced that they may have to cut key interest rates if the financial crisis consuming the Eurozone continues to have a negative impact on exports. The Office of Economic Cooperation and Development recommended lowering the main interest rate to help offset the projected 2.8% rise in inflation for next year. Many economists believe that this is mainly due from an increase in the lower bracket of the value-added tax that was implemented last January and out of weather. Five-day forecast for Prague is a little gloomy. Um, tomorrow is a high of 49, mostly cloudy. Over the weekend, you better get, bust out the rain jackets and uh, umbrellas there, because James, because it's it's going to rain pretty heavy at times. And then finally, at the beginning of next week, we're going to see the sun again. Although it's going to be a little chilly, a high of 38. This is in Fahrenheit, and obviously we know that in Prague we use Celsius, but um, I have not had that. If I can't do those calculations in my head, so we're going to go. Are we going to sign off here? Now we're signing off. We're signing off. Yes, sir. Now we're signing off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Click. Hello, my name is Jason Galletly with Baxley Industries, and in this segment I'll be interviewing our country's expatriate, Tim Orton, in the Czech Republic. Here you will obtain basic information of the country as well as various views that the citizens have on business people there. To get this interview started, we're going to start with a basic question. Where is the Czech Republic located? Czech Republic is located in Central Europe. Um, its capital city is Prague, as well as uh, the, the lang main language of the, of the country is uh, Slavic. All right. And what is the literacy rate in Czech Republic? Uh, the literacy rate is 99%, which stacks up and matches up equally with that of the United States. And who is the Czech Republic's main partner for trading? Um, that would be the Germans. All right. And what is the maximum work week that the Czech Republic citizens work? Uh, that's a good question. They work 48 hours a week compared to the United States, which is only a 40, 40 hour a week. And the Czech Republic is the largest center for the production of what product in Central Europe? Uh, that would be motor vehicles. Very nice. And if you're going to a meeting, what would entail proper business attire in the Czech Republic? That would be dark suits, uh, uh, dark blue, navy, uh, muted color, much like what you're seeing us wearing right here, with uh, bright colored shirts and uh, beautiful bright ties, much like this one that I have on. <laughs> as well as a strong fragrance of cologne, uh, perfume for the ladies, and a nice strong aftershave. Very nice. And how do the Czech Republic citizens view the businessman? Uh, a, much like a Bernie Madoff, uh, a crook, because for the most part there have been no clear-cut ethical business situations uh, as far as boundaries goes, and then also bribery plays a huge role in day-to-day -day business situations. Well, thank you very much for that information. I'm Jason Galletly, this is Tim Morton, and you all have a nice day. In this part of the video, we're going to demonstrate successful and not successful ways to conduct business with, Czech, with business people in the Czech Republic. Here in this simulation, I will be a Czech businessman waiting for two Americans who wish to do business with me. The Tim and Jared will come in and we'll get it started. How are you doing? Good, how's it going? Pretty good. Well. Call me James. Nice to meet you, James. It's a nice bottle of 52 Bordeaux. Man, I don't know how you got a hold of this one. This is good. Let's get out here. And have a seat. I'm glad you made it here on time. Yeah, it was, uh, these, these new train rates, these lower train rates over here. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. They're actually expanding and uh, reducing costs. So you'd be able to ride that thing a lot more. Oh, that's perfect, perfect. Wow. 
see you got here on time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know where my, my associate is. He's uh, running a little late. I guess, uh, you know. All right, we'll get him a pass on this one. What's up, guys? Hi, how you doing? I'm doing well. Sorry I'm a little late. I forgot to uh, turn my clock forward. You guys are always... You guys run early over here. What the heck's up with that? No, oh, have a seat. Oh, have a okay. Seat. Okay, and right there is where we're going to stop and we're going to highlight the main differences just right off the bat. First off, we had the first person come in and they came in at the correct time, very punctual, which is really key with how the uh, business people in the Czech Republic operate. They also gave a really nice bottle, which it wasn't too nice, but we're going to act like it's really, really nice. And that's a main key when, as soon as you meet someone in the Czech Republic. Um, also, he kept the formal contact with me, like calling me Mr. with a title, until I invited him to use my first name, and then he was freely able to. And punctuality is really big, because that would determine this whole event. If this would have really happened, we would have seen this business venture not really go too far after this because of uh, you were worrying about these things in the future. Also small talk. Um, the first person soon that came in, we introduced ourselves to each other, he gave me the bottle, and then we proceeded to have a conversation concerning uh, Czech Republic finance and the train transportation where they're going to reduce cost. And that's really key as well. And the second person of course did not do that, he came right in and jumped, called me James right away and just sat right down and was ready to go. Small talk's very, very important in the Czech Republic. Going back to our simulation earlier, I just wanted to highlight a few more things that um, I noticed were a little bit different from each of the two people that were trying to conduct business with me. Um, one is when I was presented with this fine bottle of Mountain Dew. I was given just one, and that's because Czechs prefer an odd number, but not 13. And that's important when you're giving flowers or wine or any gifts like that to a Czech business person. Also, you'd like to avoid lilies as flowers because they're a sign of, uh, they're used at funerals in the Czech Republic. And since flowers are often given to females, um, you might not want to give them flowers that mean death. Also, don't really give flowers to anyone over the age of 35 because that's a um, that's received as like uh, a, a connotation of like love or affection. Um, another thing, we have a much different style of dress and presentation from the two individuals. Um, we've got one person who is wearing a suit and a tie and a jacket. It's really professional, and you can notice he kept the jacket on the whole remainder, the whole time of the interview. Our other individual who just flew on in late has no jacket and no has no jacket on, which is really major and can be taken as a huge sign of disrespect. Also, he's lacking a tie. Um, even though his bow tie looks really spectacular, a full length uh, proper double lens or not on a tie would be a more appropriate level of dress for this business meeting.